In this video, I want to look at a, a common example of using a statistical test, and that is the independent samples t-test. Very often we want to know whether one particular group differs from another significantly on a particular variable. For example, I'm looking here at a data set about the health and specifically the cholesterol and, and blood pressure levels of a group of men and women, males and females. As you can see, I have one variable here for sex, showing whether they are male or female. I have a variety of them. I have another variable showing which age group they're in. I have a, a variable showing how much exercise these people do, how much alcohol they drink, and their weight in kilograms. And then I have three variables showing their cholesterol levels over a three-month period. Cholesterol 1, cholesterol in the first month, cholesterol in the second month, and cholesterol 3, the cholesterol level in the third month. For example, in this case, I want to look and see whether men and women differ significantly in their mean cholesterol level in the first month. So I'll be looking at cholesterol 1 and determining the two groups by whether they are male or female using the sex variable. Now, when doing tests of this kind, we have to be sure whether to apply a parametric or a non-parametric test. In this case, we want to be sure that the cholesterol variable is fairly normally distributed. And we want to do a test to see whether that's the case or not. If it isn't, then we need to use a non-parametric test, like the Wilcoxon or the sign test. Things like cholesterol are fairly commonly normally distributed, so we'd expect it to be the case here. But to be sure, we will check that. We can do that by going to the Analyze and Explore. So go to the Analyze menu, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore. That brings up the Explore dialog, where we can pick the variable we want to explore. The variable list on the left-hand side includes cholesterol in January, that's the first month, cholesterol 1, so select that and click on the picker button to move it into the dependent list. And we want to make sure that we select certain statistics. Let's just make sure we have our descriptives showing. That's already ticked. Click on continue. And let's choose some plots. It's useful to have a histogram as well as a stem and leaf plot, so we'll select that. And we want to do a test for normality, so make sure that button there is selected as well. Then click on continue to include those plots. And having set up the dialog, we can now create the output. So click on OK. That opens up the output window, which you can now see. First of all, we can see that cholesterol, January, that's the first measure, was based on 50 respondents. And in the descriptive table, we can see that the, the mean was 193.90. The variance um, was, or the standard deviation rather, was 37.027. Looking a bit further down the page, we can see a histogram for that variable. And it's beginning to look a bit like a normal distribution. That is, at the extremes, at the high end and the low end of the variety of cholesterol values, there are relatively few people, few individuals. Towards the middle, there are relatively more individuals. And that's what we expect of a variable that is normally distributed. It's also slightly skewed to the lower end, but not very strongly skewed. And just above that chart is a table actually showing a couple of tests for normality. There are two, the komogorov smirnov test and the Shapiro-Wilk test. The komogorov smirnov test we use when the sample is more than 50 in size. The Shapiro-Wilk test we use slightly more cautiously when we have 50 or fewer individuals in our sample or in our group. In this case we have 50, so we'll pay attention to the Shapiro-Wilk test. You can see here the significance value for this test, statistic of 0.962 with 50 degrees of freedom, the significance is 0.109. That is above the normal alpha value we use here of 0.05, and so therefore we can accept the null hypothesis and assume therefore that we have normally distributed data. In a sense it's confirming what we saw from the histogram below. That's the histogram here. That's pretty normally distributed. So we're pretty sure that we can use a parametric test in this case which is a t-test. So let's try and do that t-test now looking at whether men and women have different levels of cholesterol 
in their first test. To do that, go to the compare means, analyze compare means again, and choose independent samples t-test. That brings up the independent samples t-test dialog, and again we have to use the variable pickers to pick which variables we want to work on as our test variable and as our grouping variable. The test variable is the dependent variable, that is the cholesterol in the first month, January. So select that and click on the picker button to move it into the test variables box. We can actually do a t-test on, on a variety, or rather t-tests on a variety of different variables all at once. In this case I'm just going to do one. We also need to tell the program how to define the two groups, and we do that using a grouping variable. This is a nominal variable, um, sex, which has values for men and values for women. So select that and put that into the grouping variable box. You notice when it does so, there are two question marks after the word sex. That's because at the moment we haven't told SPSS which values define our two groups. Now you might think that's pretty obvious, it can only be male or female. But actually, sometimes we can use variables that have more than two values, and we can tell the SPSS which particular two values to use. Anyway, even in the case of sex, we have a value for male and a value for female, and we have a value for missing values as well. So we have to tell the computer which two values indicate male and female. And you do that using the Defined Groups button. So click on Define Groups, and now we can tell it, the program, which values to use for male and female. And in fact, the values are 1 for female and 2 for male. So enter those two numbers to define the two groups. Click on Continue. And now we've set up the t-test on cholesterol level to look and see whether the mean value for the group defined by 1, that is female, is different from the group defined by 2, that is male. So I click on OK, and again the output window is opened. If I scroll down you can see that. So here's the t-test results. There are two tables. The first shows us the means of the two groups. So here are the females with a mean of 195.27. In the line below are the males with a mean cholesterol of 192.42. They are different, but they're also fairly close. Are they significantly different? Well, we look at the second table, the independent samples t-test table, to see whether that's the case. And you'll see there are two lines in this table. A line that says equal variance is assumed, and a line that says equal variance is not assumed. So first of all, we have to see whether those variances are like each other, are they i.e. equal or unlike each other. And we can see, looking at this table here, they are again fairly similar, 36.139 to 38.688, not too big, uh, big a difference between them. So we suspect that, that we can assume equal variances. But let's check that, and we do that using Levine's test for equality quality of variances. You can see here it, it takes a statistic, the F value of 0.065, and the significance attached to that. And you can see here it's not significant, with using an alpha level of 0.05, it is well above 0.05, and therefore we can assume equal variances. So let's do that by looking at the, the top line here, which is where that assumption is true. And we can see the t-test has been calculated for us as 0 0.270, 48 degrees of freedom, with a significance of 0.789. In other words, again, it's not below 0.05, not below our alpha value, and therefore we accept the null hypothesis, and we have no evidence that the two groups are different in their mean value. In other words, we have no evidence that male and female are significantly different. They are slightly different, but this is not significant. We could have got it by sheer chance. In fact, most likely we have got it by sheer chance. So we have no evidence that men and women have different levels of cholesterol in the first month of testing.